George Woods was born in St Albans in Hertfordshire on the 15th of May 1852. His father was William Windet Woods from Norfolk and he ran a successful drapery business in St Albans and George and his elder brother William also entered the drapery trade. In the 1870s they moved to Woking in Berkshire and his brother set up a business of William Woods Draper and Grocer. In 1878, George married a local girl, Mary Butler, whose family had a successful drapery business not far from the woods. In 1879, their daughter Margaret was born. In 1880, their father died, leaving both boys some shares, which was immensely helpful to George and Mary, and he also had an income through dabbling on the stock exchange, which helped George to pursue his hobby of photography. And with Mary's poor health, they decided to move to the coast. So they packed up their belongings and moved to Hastings, as Mary's brother John had a grocery business there in George Street, a rather aptly named road. So around 1889... They settled in a house in Mount Pleasant Road. Then after a period of about two years, they moved across the road to a more substantial property with a small garden, where they lived for ten years. Ethel was a deeply religious person. George died in 1934 of cancer, age 81, after a four-year illness but Ethel lived on up until 1962, age 90. Here is a collection of George's photos of Hastings and the fishing community, the beach, parade and town, put together with a narration of Hastings' history from the year dot, when Hastings was not on any map, through all the successive battles and invasions, up to the Victorian era, and is, I think, a concise and very interesting history of the boroughs of Hastings and St. Leonard's. Oh, and by the way, the woman in George's photos, on the pier, is thought to be his first wife, Mary, and the young girl in many of George's photographs, his daughter, Margaret. Hastings from Pre to Modern History, produced and narrated by Mike Wells. The origin of Hastings is somewhat obscure. However, it is certain that prior to the Roman invasion of 55 BC, it was inhabited by a race of early peoples from what is now Europe. But it is probable that this race of people established their settlement here while Britain was still part of mainland Europe. These people were of Goth origin, and unlike the ancient Britain of early history or prehistory, they had developed certain cultures. These Goths either discovered or already were skilled in producing iron from the clays of East Sussex. They were skilled farmers and lived in permanent settlements. The ancient Britain of prehistory would appear to have been, in contrast, savage hunting nomads. <laughs> When Julius Caesar invaded the south coast of Britain in 55 BC, his legions plundered and raped Sussex with the military objective of creating a bridgehead. Although searches have taken place over the years, no remains of the Roman occupation have ever been found, and it is concluded that the Roman settlement at Portus Novus was much south of Hastings and is today beneath the waters of the Channel. It can only be assumed 
that at some, some period between the 4th century AD, the effect of perhaps the melting ice cap of the Arctic must have occurred, but this is not definitely established. In the reign of Edward the Confessor, by decree in 1050, the zinc ports were established, comprising of Hastings, Dover, Hythe, Sandwich and Romney. The function of the zinc ports was to provide a navy defence of the channel coasts of Kent and East Sussex, and to provide a navy capable of engaging enemy ships at even greater distance from our shores. The zinc ports were granted special privileges in return for their service to the king. To maintain coordination between the zinc ports, a court was established, and known as the Brotherhood of Gessling. This court still exists. Edward the Confessor died on January the 5th, 1066, and King Harold was crowned. One of his first acts was to dismantle Hastinga Kestra, Hastings Castle, which at the time was a wooden structure. Although it is not known his reason for dismantling the castle, it can only be assumed that it was his intention to construct a more durable edifice on the site. The first year of King Harold's reign which proved to be also his last, was extremely troubled, and he had to take his army to Yorkshire to subdue the claims of his brother to the crown at the Battle of Stanford Bridge. And as the sun was setting, with the soldiers of both armies exhausted, Harold was slain. This day marks the birth of the Britain which developed. A new culture was injected into the land, and with it a new and enduring civilization. King William I granted the rape of Hastings to Robert Count de Eu in 1069 who endowed a church and a college of secular canons in honour of the Blessed Virgin Mary within the ruins of Hastings Castle. In 1601, John Barley died. It is not known who or what he was, but his name is perpetuated in Barley's Lane. This lane or track probably dates from the time that Fairlight Place was built, and it connects the town of Old Hastings with the house. In 1618, the thatching of roofs was forbidden by local order to restrict the risk of fire in Hastings. In 1625, a plague of smallpox caused many deaths in the town. Hastings was isolated and the movement of residents was rigidly restricted in order to confine the disease. This inconvenience maintained until 1928, when the tramcars were replaced by trolleybuses and a more enlightened populace in St. Leonard's raised no opposition to the erection of poles and wires along the front. In 1910, a local company calling themselves the Hastings and St. Leonard's Omnibus Company operated open-top, solid-tired Milnes Daimler motor buses in the town in opposition to the trams. On July the 15th, 1917, Hastings Pier Pavilion was destroyed by fire. The Maidstone and District Motor Services opened their first depot in Earl Street in 1919. They also parked under the Linton Road arches. In 1920, the Maidstone and District Motor Services built a new garage in Brook Street and their old premises in Earl Street were let to the East Kent Road Car Company to garage their bus, which operated from Hastings to Rye via Orr. John Logie Baird made his first television transmission from a room over a flower shop in Queen's Avenue Arcade in 1924, ferrying the British Army back to England in the face of the German Blitzkrieg of artillery and aircraft. Between July 1940 and November 1944, Hastings was subject to 85 German air raids, most of which were during the hours of daylight. 550 High explosive bombs fell on the borough, causing great damage to lives and property.
In addition, 762 incendiary bombs fell. These figures do not include near misses, which fell on the beaches or in the sea. 154 people were killed and 260 seriously injured. Also, 436 people less seriously injured. Constructed in 1846, Hastings was frequented by stagecoaches. In 1731, a coach known as the Regulator operated once weekly from the Swan Inn at Hastings to London. This coach departed from Hastings at 4 a.m. on Monday and took three days to complete the journey. On Monday it reached Robertsbridge where the passengers spent the night in a local inn and on Tuesday night they again stayed overnight at Seven Oaks and arrived in London on Wednesday evening. The return journey departed from London on Thursday morning. Another trade plied before and during this time was smuggling. Here are a few of the smugglers' landing places in Hastings. The Old Woman's Tap, the site of the Royal Victoria Hotel. Stussels at Bo Peep. Gin's Stool at Galley Hill. The Slide, Rockanore. The Whippings, Ecclesbourne, Westcliff. Thank you.